Refeeding syndrome is a medical condition that is characterized by low electrolyte levels and or thiamine deficiency. It occurs when there is a reintroduction of food to someone with persistently inadequate intake. The term food is used here in the general sense since it can also occur with enteral or parenteral nutrition. Refeeding syndrome is a major concern because it can lead to dysfunction of multiple organs and in severe cases it can lead to organ failure and death. It is for this reason that risk of refeeding syndrome should be considered in the nutrition assessment of all hospitalized patients. The pathophysiology, or process that leads to the development of refeeding syndrome, is not entirely clear. However, there is agreement in the literature that it is connected to a rapid switch from catabolic to anabolic pathways. When energy intake is low, the body is mostly catabolic, breaking down glycogen, body proteins, and fat to create what it needs to survive. During this process, electrolytes and thiamine are used up and not replaced, leading to deficiency in the cells. Once the patient is fed, energy finally becomes available. The glucose leads to an increase in insulin, insulin stimulates anabolic pathways, anabolic pathways use up micronutrients faster than they can be replaced, and micronutrients reach a level of severe deficiency. That deficiency is what causes all of the problems. The American Society for Parenteral and Enteral Nutrition has released guidelines for assessing risk of refeeding syndrome. They classify risk as moderate or significant using criteria such as BMI, recent weight loss, recent intake, electrolyte status, fat and muscle status, and disease state. Patients at significant risk only need to meet one of the criteria, such as having a BMI less than 16 or having minimal to no intake for greater than 7 days. An important consideration when using this tool from Aspen is that risk is likely cumulative, meaning the more criteria that are met, the greater the risk. It is also important to consider that electrolytes can appear to be at normal levels even when electrolyte status is poor, and that laboratory testing of thiamine status does not appear in the criteria because it is currently unreliable. Thank you for watching. Check out these videos for more content just like this.